who do you give credit to for starting Rolling 60? Odie Shaw. When I, Odie Shaw started the Rolling 60. See, I know who started the Rolling 60, so I don't get into the I'm, debate. Don't leave your cousin out. Well, well I, I put my cousin in there, but I know who started it because when we went that night to walk into Inglewood, when they relieved me of being the leader of the Dinkers, and Odie came home from YA, I remember what happened. And the Dinkers got crew, shot? Huh? And when Luce got shot? I don't want to talk about shot. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, Monster Luce, already said who did it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the Luce booty? Yeah, they both did. They both did. <laughs> Yeah, when Luce Booty no, got shot by Lil Caesar. Yeah, we were 76, right? No, no, yeah, we did that when we went and took Sitting Ella Park. And they yeah, couldn't yeah, yeah. go head up with us, so they started shooting at us because we was beating their ass. Always good way and to And they started busting enemies. caps because they couldn't hang with us from the shoulders. So that's when Luce Booty got shot. But to answer your question, is that that night we went over there to fight. Uh, we were up at the White Mountain. There's a there was a, a hamburger place on Florence called it, White Mountain with Bayard. Like Bayard yeah. and them lived over there. So we crossed. We were about 17 deep, and I was marching the gang in Inglewood to fight. And when we got over there, they decided to pull a coup on me. So they said, "Hey, cutes, man, uh, Odie's home." There. And uh, we want him to be in the car. And I said, oh, shit. And then, uh, so Odie, I said, what you saying, Odie? Like that. And then Odie said, yeah, man. He said, come on, man. I said, I said, I don't give a fuck. I'm a Magnificent Seven anyway. And then, uh, so Odie took the car. So I stayed with those guys. Every day we'd be together still. But I wasn't the leader no more. And I was a little, my feelings was hurt a little. And, uh. You know, you say, Odie changed the name immediately to the N Hood. So I told Odie, don't change it that name. I said, you can't say that name, Odie. And he said, why? I said, because Blue and them already got an N Hood up there in the hundreds. So they're going to think y'all together. And he said, no shit. And I said, yeah, you've been in Hawaii. You don't even know what's going on. And then he said, all right. Then from the, the N Hood only lasted like a month. And then, and then Fred Hill came with uh, 60. Fred Hill, the one that named it the six. Fred Hill, the one that shot me six times. Messed up a good shirt. Fuck. Sorry. You, you know this. But we can't talk about certain yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was surprised okay. that he knew yeah. that. So, oh, we all know who shoots us and who we shoot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jimmy Wild, though. Jimmy Wild, though. Jimmy Wild, get that, though. Close personal mm -hmm. relationships. Jimmy Wild. But, but, but what I'm saying is so that. What, what is Ray? Is, what is Ray? Ray? Oh, a lot of people don't know mm -hmm. that the first gang that I joined up. With the '60s was the Dinker, the Dinker Crips, the first gang to join up, and on the West Side. I'm not talking about them, y'all. The, 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 the whole, the whole Dinker, first gang, the whole Dinker and, and Magnificent <coughs> Seven is kind of blurry. Can, can you break that apart? What came first and what came next? Because oh, well, you're kind of blurring the lines. Yeah, the, the, the Magnificent Seven. Seven came first. Okay. And then the Dinker Crips came. Because you got to remember, uh, uh, oh, okay. Raymond Potts and them are cafe boys. And so Cafe Boys and the Dinker Crips and the Al Capones, they were all basically in existence at the same time. Because Miles and Took had to got in a fight. Did they? And so, yeah, so our oh, family oh, was oh. against them. Yeah, I, I won't yeah. say that because Miles ain't and, here. And you ain't going to pictures of all Miles? And Took ain't here, so you ain't, you ain't hurt no feelings. Oh, no, I would never say who when they fight. You ain't got no pictures of all Miles? I gave him, Kev Mac, put pictures up of Miles. So basically, Cuse, you just gave Odie Shaw the credit for, for for bringing neighborhood crip into the 60s streets and creating rolling 60s. Yeah, anybody hey, hands that. Hands down. Oh, no. Okay, now let me tell you this. I started, uh, Took had me start the Harshman Crips and the Crenshaw Crips. And he could tell you who started the Folsom Crips, me and Bruno. There was no Crips at, uh, at, at Folsom until I got there. We were black coats. We had to be up under umbrellas because we couldn't really say our set out loud at a particular time because these motherfuckers wanted to stab us up. Well, they had already course. stabbed Raymond. So so we said, we're going to build this shit up with a mask on it. And then when all of our homeboys get here from the county jail and they coming, we're going to take that shit off of it and we're just going to be crits. I want, I, want to, I want to run back to Neighborhood Crip one more time. Yeah, Odie. Okay, you give it to Odie hands uh, down. I went out of, oh, so now I want to go back to Big Rick. But I want to go... I want to go 
back to the hundreds now. Okay. Who, who started Neighborhood Crip in the hundreds, big, according to you? Uh, big Blue Blackie. and Pookie had the juice. How come we keep hearing about uh, O'Neal Brown starting the neighborhood? Uh, well, you can hear about them all you want. Uh, big Blue, Big Blue, and he Black had a dog. He, Black Dog was his little brother. They the ones yeah. who started uh, that, and he was probably Stacey their Con he was probably their Conrad. Stacy Bullock was Crip Five. Let me tell you the the the, the, the story that we get from the okay. neighborhood. I mean, we get two versions. Odie Shaw, Raymond Potts, and all those dudes just old time West Side Crips. No, they were never West Side Crips. Hey, let me just break it down. Babyface, Snoop Dogg, and Big Rick and all them started rolling six. No, they were they were under them. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. The, the, the younger guys started the gang and the older niggas joined after the fact. No, no, this is the history. Babyface, ba first of all, Odie's older than all of us. Odie Shaw's older than all of us. Odell's older than all of us. Let's get that on the record. We can't pull a rank because of age. No, bro. no, this is what we I were pulling rank. We, we not, dumb we not pulling rank on age. I'm telling you, these dudes came into Thug before no, we got Thug, and they was at a level before we got there. They had already been to Camp and that, That's different from starting the gang, though. They started the gang. I wouldn't get, me, myself, this, Nah, and, and I wasn't there, right? I came on the tail end of that as well. No, but you came in '72, so you seen what he did. Yeah, yeah, but I, I wasn't. They did no, no. Yeah, but I wasn't. I was in '72. There was no such thing as ETG. ETG came in '79, but before that, in '74, my hood started in '74. You gotta Crip realize. Started in 71. You gotta realize these guys I, I was wasn't in elementary none of that information. School. So you gotta realize mm -hmm. these guys were in elementary school. Yeah, I, I, the West Side what? Crips before they became West Side Crips. What were they? They were. They were Capones. When, when, when did you become aware of ETG and all the systems? When, when did you become conscious okay. of those two games? There was no such thing as that. When did the West Side break up? The West Side broke up in 1972. In 1972, we had a meeting up at Sportsman Park. The people that was at the meeting that broke up the West Side was Buddha, Monkey Man, Hillbilly, Barefoot Pookie, uh, Mouse, uh, there was one. Uh, there was one more. Melvin Hardy. Did I say Melvin Hardy? Okay. Those if were you didn't, people. we'll get him twice. We got him twice. <laughs> so don't, at that meeting, they they were mad at Tuck because he had got a job working for Bob Simmons and he quit coming to meetings. So we would always have meetings and Tuck Wednesday showing up at the meetings. So they said, "Hey man, he's getting all the credit for this and that. He ain't showing up at the meetings, and we here." fighting in the streets and shit, and he ain't coming. And then, so we taking our sets back. Wow. And I said, what do you mean we taking our sets back? And he said, well, y'all Magnificent Seven, we already blocked, we already uh, in hood. Like he said, we already had our names before we joined together. Raymond is what made us put a Crip umbrella mm -hmm. and solidify everything right. together. You gotta realize we were separate entities. Raymond came, and made us all turn into Crips. That's what was so he was dynamic the shocker, about it. How shocker he used mm -hmm. to do it. He well, took these little separate splinter gangs. He went over there and that little bitty ass small project that Jamel had. And sometimes he went by force. 88. But didn't Block come out in 73? Block is the old hood. Block's the old hood. No, no, no. Uh, Melvin Hardy. They were, yeah, they yeah, were yeah, smacks. Yeah, the street. They yeah, called yeah, themselves yeah, smacks. Yeah, yeah, so, sure. so, 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 so. That, that area, everything in that area was painted smack. They had one glove, and they would come and smack you. By the time Tookie and them got to Washington, Washington was a predominantly group school. Anybody else who went there didn't have nothing. So, so the smacks made the Al Capone was no more. They became smacks. Now they agreed to call it West Side, because Raymond and them and Bull Dog and them came up there and had a meeting with them, but. Uh, Melvin Hardy had already knew Raymond because he came from the east side. I gotta ask a question because you, you're throwing a lot on the table right yeah. there. You know, it, it, you, know, you, know it's, you know it's coming. Okay. St. Andrews Park. St. Andrews Park. Washington High School. Where did West Side start? West Side started. West Side started as a collective body between people who lived in the '80s and between people who lived in the hundreds. And the West Side Crips started at Washington High School. 
Monster, the first Crip you ever met, who's your Crip influence? Eight Ball, my homeboy Eight Ball. Uh, Daryl Knox, rest yeah. in peace. Daryl Knox was with me. Eight Ball was like, he was the first dude on my street to get made. His uncle. First dude, first dude to come out. You know what I mean? Just with the whole sagging, the whole, just whole gangster style. You know what I mean? You're giving Eight Ball your Crip influence over Tookie and Tookie No, his speed, his speed. Yeah, because Tookie's 10 years older than me. I never Crip with Tookie. He's older. We older than him. See, I never. I, I wasn't about, the two generation. About guys that stand out like a year or two older than yeah, him. Yeah, I'm talking about my immediate influence. Boy, A ball was that this, prototypical. But then again, Tookie was kind of a floater at that time. No, yeah, yeah, and he wasn't. He wasn't dressing Crip down. He was just yeah. overalls. Yeah. He was doing grown. Well, he was there on 69th, but but he, he just he wasn't was, dressing. He, he, he wasn't man. He, he was doing grown man shit. What's, what's your official year, Monsters? My official year joining Entry Against June 75th. He would fight, but he would fight. June 75th. Then Aqua Terry, between 75, 77, 77. And then 78, I got my name, Mom. He was taking fade, but no. And then from there, I just catapulted. You know what I mean? He was working. 78, you got your name. So in between 75 and 78, come on. Aqua period, I was just floating around trying to do Aqua job, trying to get. Show that you know, so the big homies see me as faithful. Brand walls, I see him, house, I see him as a kid. I watched Monster grow up into a down ass dude from when he was going to Raymond Avenue Elementary School with my little brother. And I know he was a curious kid, he was a smart and he was fast. He, Monster, he, I mean, why wouldn't you want to be a crit? If you live on a street, yeah. it ticks down the street. Just, we you know, around the corner, and we making this shit look appealing. These X Men, they doing spectacular shit. Trench we ain't coats, doing bullshit. Shit. Shit. Open I, the trench coat, got a sawed off shotgun hanging from the side and shit. That shit like glamorous. I, I, like, I gotta ask Monster wow. something also, because there was a uh, about Raymond Potts. There was a, a, a thing going on for a minute where no one could throw an identity on him. Some people were saying he was from A Tray and others were saying he was from 60s. He had a son that was A Tray. He had a son that was A Tray. Rest in peace. And Rampon Fusion comes in that? Yeah, but Rampon, Rampon, he never sided with them, never really sided with Raymond us. Raymond wasn't Raymond in the war. Just, no, Raymond, he, Raymond, but he Raymond knew where his family was. was. He, he called us a couple times over there. He never got and, I, and he just and he never alerted nobody that we was there or nothing. Never, and we left. He never told nobody that he saw us or nothing. Yeah, he wasn't in. I respect that. He just wasn't in. But he's, he was a hero. I know this might be blasphemy for you, Monster. Why did you choose A Trey over Rolling Sixties? That's a good question. You know the thing is, I used to write OGC R slash Sixties. I used to write that because our hoods were so intertwined. All my friends were 60s when I was in seventh grade. I was the horse man, 75, 76. Then I got kicked out the first day. But um, so then was the homies. I was just I was saying that earlier that 60s us and the Hoovers, we was just like one malleable ass fucking set. But no, it was there was there was contradictions, but they weren't antagonistic contradictions. There there was there was struggle, but it was all within friendly competition. You know what I mean? Like like rappers from the same label. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna try to drop some better bars than that, but you know what I mean? It's all within the, all within the parameter. Since, since we're talking about that also, as far as when the war kicked off, some people say it was over that one incident with the with the dude that went from 9-0 to a tray. Others saying there was a lead up to it. What was it lead up to? It was a lead up to that. The lead up. The lead up. The situation got blown totally out of proportion. The, the, the situation was supposed to be a head-up fight. The situation was supposed to be a head-up fight, like like everybody always do. Just settle your, your beef with knuckles. Handle that and push on. But one of the dudes who got, he got recruited by us, he just didn't understand the parameters, man. He had just been on the set too, too short of a time. He ran and got a strap. He shouldn't even ran. He probably was running just to get away. But he ran and got a strap and came back. And he just dumped out Tyrone and shot Bogart right in front of everybody. And the homies was like, man, what the fuck is you doing, man? And everybody was like, and everybody broke. It, it but he was so fucked up that that little Opie came on 67. I was on Charles Ray's porch and little Opie pulled up on his bike and he said, cute, let me get on the handlebars 
and you come around there, they're going to fight on the side of the Johns. No, that was, no, that was Big Oak. Yeah, yeah, Big Oak. Well, you I call say Little because yeah. That's Big Oak. So Everybody's say, a little cute. Yeah, yeah. So I say, I say, uh, the little youngsters know how to handle their business. Y'all going to be all right. This is what I tell them. I say, y'all going to be all right. Who's fighting? Uh, Big Rick's brother and Daddy Fatty. I know both of the kids. So uh, these are kids to me, real kids that are young teenagers. Uh, I believe he just got to the 10th grade, one of them. Yeah, but Daddy and, Fatty was built like a 47-year-old but, but, but these dudes were giants. They were like six they foot were one, dudes, man. you know, tall ass, 180-pound, uh, you know, big dudes. They, these were going to be giants. So, so I thought they were just going to have a fair fight, so I didn't want to go watch the fight. We don't want to talk these guys to go here, though. So I'm pretty confident, but as they said, this dude came out of nowhere and he wants to, you know, be a part of this clique. He ain't got no love for this dude, so he just gets to shoot him. He don't know them, he didn't eat at their table. These dudes would go over each other's house. They would play at school and jump gates and go rob donuts at the bakery. Monster together. Monster, did you know the shooter? No, not personally. I, 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 I would beat him later on in YA, but I didn't know him being, no. So and he, I was, he, he, he was a 9-0 and he did officially cross over the entrance. Yeah, industry. but then there wasn't no, wasn't no thing because there wasn't nobody pushing gangster neighborhood. Uh, when you ran across him in YA, what was he climbing? He had stopped banging. He said he didn't want no part of it no more. He said he was cool. So he, he just went under. Nobody ever never really dug him up. You know what I mean? Knew what he this, like. this is a question I gotta ask. People get it confused. 9-0 gangster crib. Were they a spin-off or related to a Trey gangster in any form? Back I don't then. know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just when I when I became an OGC, I knew that them dudes was uh, nine old gangster crips. That they was OGC. That's all I knew. Listen, what I'm saying is there was no. It, this is this is when the other nine olds on the other side were nine old Hoovers. Okay, we're talking about Space Ghost, Lump, Crab, on um, all these dudes on that side, Baron Cross, you know. But on this side, on our side, there was 90 gangsters at Sportsman Park. Jesse Owens. So, um, but we was always there, Sam, so we always had a conflict with them. Anyway, before the, before the big wars. But it wasn't no antagonistic thing. You know, we'd, we'd go up there anytime they come down our park. It wasn't no wars with them. Because it wasn't no 30, 60, 90 yet, you know? So when you guys started beating with 90, which 90 set was it first? The, the Hoover set or, or the gangster yeah, set? It was the first car to go. We was the first car to go. After they killed An, An was the first funeral. And you can look this up, man, but um, Andre Jones was the first funeral in 1979, first gangbanger to get killed in South Central. And he was killed by, uh, by the 9 0 Hoovers. Or so we thought. But it was one of the 9 0 Hoovers' cousins from Venice Showline that actually killed him. Anyway, uh, so, but the Hoovers X'd him out. <laughs> Y'all no longer Hoovers. And so it was green light on them. So that night after the wake, we went first. We had a stolen jig. We went over there being the homies. We put it down. Got a couple. Why? Because we allied with the Hoovers. Because, we, because we, that was the first funeral of 1979. And Andre Jones was moon moved from 107's little brother. So I mean, that's a serious ass. Wow. And they just. lost all our brothers and so Hold on a minute. So you basically saying since you were allied with the Hoovers, you roll with their beef. We obligated, yeah. We got into like five wars, man, with different games. Yeah, but because, oh yeah, 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 yeah there's been guys, more. You guys, you guys are picking and choosing them because you guys sat out on the East Coast war. That's, that was only time. It wasn't picking and choosing. Every war before that, we went to with them. The blocks, the neighborhoods, the, uh, the uh, all the 111s, right? The, the, the Regal boys who became the, uh, the Butlongs, uh, 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 the Nine Nines, all the new. Every time they go, we go. The UGs. Never kill none of us. The legends. The fuck is the legends? Not no disrespect towards the legends. They might, you know, but they neighborhoods now, right? Let me tell you the situation happened, bro. I'm in a joint on main line just a couple months back. So they tell me a new keyway in the unit. So I go up to a cell. I see the brother got a big old natural and shit. Big old buff brother. I said, what's up, man? So where you from? He said, neighborhood. I said, Foley's? This is gang Foley's on the yard. I'm just like about 14 Foley's on the yard. Hitters. So I said, he said, no. I said, 60s? He said, no. I said, where you from, homie? 
was out in the country boy crib, Bakersfield neighborhood. Yeah. I said, as soon as my little homies get some gas, they coming up there. They gonna get some money, get some gas. They come to get up there. But why'd you, why would you join that, man? He said, man, it wasn't us, man. Our big homies did that. So I was fucking with him really. So I said, hey, I said, what's your name? He said, Nip. I said, no. He said, yeah, Nipsey Hustle. This is right after Nip's guy got hit by no, 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 this is before. Wait, this is a year before. I said, all right. So we was cool, but, but, but it was astonishing to see that, right? But just the same way, I was telling him earlier, I was on the yard and the cat came up to me and say, I'm in the gangster car, homie. I just want to meet you, OG. I honor to meet you. I'm like, all right. Yeah, right now. I said, where you from, homie? He said, I'm from Pimp Player Hustler Gangster Crip. Yeah, I said, what? I said, where you from, homie? Yeah, the dude said, Pimp Player Hustler yeah, yeah. Gangster Crip. I said, God damn, you, like you need some sight, man. Yeah. You need some mood stabilizer. Real talk. How can you be all that? Got my mind racing. My, my little cousin started that shit. I, 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 I gotta ask Monster the million dollar question. What's, what, what, what's your opinion on the ETGs and the English families clicking up? Were you a part of that? What's your opinion about that? You know, ultimately I have to take responsibility because I was I was forming some thoughts at that time and I had gotten out some of my writings in, in, a, in a novelistic form and thug life. But, um, what do you mean? Do you take responsibility for that? Why? How? Because I went on a show one time on um, Old Drama on BET. Me, Dub C, and Warren G, and a couple of cats from, from the Bay Area about fake gangster raps and gangster rap, right? And so, uh, on that show, I was telling everybody, I was saying, man, Oh, I said, I ain't, I ain't in the banging. I'm in there bringing everybody together. Key ways and down moves, bringing them together. You know what I mean? That, that's my ultimate goal as a revolutionary is to bring our people together. And my folks just took that and flighted with it. Next thing you know, Tiny Diamond making deals with the Inglewood families. And the Inglewood family giving them parcels of land all the way up to 3rd Avenue. Just said Tyson homies. So now the Far West a Trey gangsters are way across Van Ness. We've been fighting with the families for like 45 years trying to get across Van Ness. They ain't cross Van Ness and we ain't cross Van Ness, but as a partial to the peace thing, they give them up to Third Avenue. It's not the Far West plum. But not the Far West saying, we ain't even Crips, we just a trade gangsters. So they got the families in the hood. And the family got stores in the hood. And the homies go to the family funeral with red tea hats. And the families come to our hood and they, man, it's crazy. That shit. Here's my point though, here's my point, here's my point, here's my point. I'm a revolutionary, but I understand certain things got to play out. I think ultimately it's the wrong thing that Keyways uniting with Don Moves to get at other Keyways. I think it's wrong that when the rolling 60s get at the uh, dimmer lanes and they start whoop, whoop rolling or figure rolling, the strange alliances that exist inside LA, inside the Crip thing, is just one more just real talk, uh, nail in the coffin of me overstanding that we're at our last stage of exhaustion. It's a rap. It's a fucking rap, man. Real talk, this shit is over. And, and look, if anybody caught it on that last crescendo, when he makes that last motherfucking turn, like if you ain't in that motherfucking tunnel, if you can't ride that shit, you're gonna get wiped out. I'm telling you, the whole the, the whole D game is over. The government is selling the best weed in the country. <laughs> Monster. Have you ever came across any rolling 60s in Denver lanes that push that what you're saying? I, yeah, I ran, I, I ran across one Denver lane. Uh, well, dude, named, dude, dude named Lurch, yeah. And he the one told me he was from past in Denver lane. And he's like, yeah, we got the we, we rolling. He just came from the county jail. So that, that the LA county jail was where they, they like, well, we got the we. But the little homies got a uh, move and the groove. You know what's crazy? We hear them stories all the time from people that ain't from our hood. Within our hood, we ain't never seen Oh no, I, I understand how that, that happens. Me being a minor celebrity, I get that all the time, right? I come to the hood and I done been killed like three people in the hood. And they're like, they like, man, monster get out the hood, the lady say she saw you. I saw me what? Man, you shot the dude in the face, man. I'm like, man, come on. And then after a while, then the police ain't coming. I start taking advantage, taking advantage. Yeah, I, I, I got a dude in the face, man. Don't fuck up. 
I said, use it to my advantage like a fucking pole this shit. Because all the time, you ain't got to use force, you know? All right, I want to get on these two guys right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, monster, man. I, I got all that knowledge, man. You, I told you, it's sharp, motherfucker. The, the KMV maniac. <laughs> I want to know if Rockhead and Cutes know each other and if they do from where? I know Rock from Folsom, old Folsom. We, we was in uh, Folsom. I remember when they first got there on the main line, we would be, we would spend our days in the boxing ring, lifting weights in the back with Big Bill, uh, running around the track with Chew and them for five dudes. We were there, Bird Dog was there. Uh, shit, Michael Stone was there. Uh, all the G's were there, man. We were on this little ass yard, all functioning together under one umbrella. We were, we were down with each other. It was one umbrella or a few umbrellas? No, at that time, it was, it was just one. Us. Like I so said, when I got off the bus at Folsom, yeah, the us. only thing that was organized was Peabody shit. Yeah. With, with Cutes and everybody, we, we came. We was rips before CCO came to the yeah. yard, before Blue Notes came to the yard. We were but they wasn't none of them on the yard yet. Yeah. They came later they came on later. after we started doing our thing. Remember, I got there in 80. Okay. We got there before those guys start getting rolled up from uh, San Quentin and, 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 uh, and, and even in Solid the 80s. Only thing, only, only thing that was organized in 80, 81 was Blue Magic. Yeah. He had the Sea Machine in San Quentin. He had Blue Magic and Solid Dan. Them was the only, in the early, early 80s, them was the only organization. When the Sea Machine and Blue Magic came together as one, in probably 83, 84, that's when it started coming. But old Folsom, the, uh, the, uh, the notes of Death Row and uh, CCO, they didn't start coming to old Folsom until 85, yeah, well, 84, we got, 85. We were saying we're Crips. We're Crips. We got our blue rags tied on our head, and we got we didn't want to make a bench, an area and where we work else. out. We had a place. We took territory. Okay. <clears throat> I asked Rebo this same question. I'm going to ask you, Cutes, because you and Rebo seem to be kind of on the same page. When you saw the Crips uniting underneath these structures, why didn't you go with the flow and become CCO or Bruno? Because I feel that since I got the Folsom first, and I could have got killed for putting my blue rag on my head, that everybody should kind of listen to me a little. That's all. I was power trip. If they would have gave you and leadership, so, you would have got in. Yeah, yeah. That's I was true. just. I gotta look that's at it. Looking answer. back that's on it, homie. but that's a good idea. Yeah, answer, but, but, but looking back on it, trip. but I never stopped loving these guys. No, no. I but, never, not for one, let me not say this, though, for one minute. Let me tell you, you know, trip. Hey, that's the trip you say that, homie. Because excuse me, just yeah. just hold that thought, just because this is very important to you too, right? That add to what you're saying. When when, when um when the homies got me and took after after the Hoover's backed out of CCO, and then the homies got me. Told me to back out of CCO. By that time, I was a lieutenant. I had my own quadrant. I had, I had I was walking like a little pyramid. It's harder to go from with all my security, all strapped on the yard in this little ass yard. I was just flossing. I didn't need all that, right? But people would come out to your yard be like UFOs. They just they just run at you because we now we had war with the blue nose. So the homies get at me and tell me to back out of CCO. Took getting at me. And I'm like, nah. By that time, I was man, I was living high on the hall. But I was doing the right thing, though. When he was a lieutenant in the CCO, when you were a lieutenant in the CCO and you said you had the squadron, were any of those squadrons from rolling 60s? No, but 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 but, but my my right leader right now, I would have to report to about all this. Was <laughs>